Um, we now shift our perspective again um, to a non-profit viewpoint. Our next speaker will be Florina Lachman, Beach Cleaning Coordinator at the West Coast Trust in Sweden. The West Coast Trust manages over 280 nature reserves on the Swedish West Coast and facilitates beach cleaning operations uh, together with coastal municipalities. Florina will talk to us about the management of pollution events on the Swedish West Coast. Florina, you have 15 minutes. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Can you see my screen? Yes, but you're not in presentation mode. Ah, of course. Um. Does it work like this? Um, I'm still seeing the same screen I was before. There's, um, I don't know if my screen is frozen, but I'm still not seeing your slides properly. What about now? Now, yes, that's Great. perfect. That's perfect. Great, thank you for the, um, the hope. And thank you for inviting us here. I'm going to present a bit of the Swedish perspective on the problem. And uh, so we're going to go back to more like hands on problems with the pellets. Um, so just a few words about um, the West Coast Trust, West Coast Trust in, in Swedish. Uh, it's a bit similar to the um, Oslo Fjordens Friluftsråd, as we are also a trust and we've been founded in 1962, and we mostly work with nature conservation, conservation and um, manage nature reserves around the area here on the Swedish West Coast, and um, also facilitate um, like an active outdoor life. And um, about the beach clean, um, I don't know if you see the, you don't see the black uh, zoom, Thing on my presentation, I hope, but that you, that you can read. Uh, so with the beach cleaning, um, it's all good. Have, yes, great, thanks. All good. Um, we've been working since several years um, together with the municipalities along the west coast. So it's twelve municipalities that work together. Uh, it's a cooperation where we exchange knowledge and um, practices about how to best do the cleanup. Um, I guess it's similar in Norway that we have a lot of marine litter washed ashore here. So it's uh, been regularly cleaned up and we collect 200 to 300 tons of plastic per year. And the work is financed both by the municipalities, but also we have funds from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. And um, the work is mainly organized in a beach cleaning map that you can see on the presentation. So we are uh, like used to reporting things on a map, I would say. And this is uh, used to coordinate both the municipality um, cleanup teams. And we have a few contractors to help the municipalities, but also a lot of volunteers. So everyone reports on this map for the regular beach cleaning. And now on to the pallets. Um, these are pictures from the Swedish West Coast. We found also a lot of pallets here. And uh, it was mostly the municipalities as well that um, it looked, looked through the beaches and really did like uh, inventations to see uh, how much pellets do they find. And um, it shifted a lot during the month, like when we asked in spring, when we got um, notifications about the pellets, they were a lot more concentrated. And then later um, during the year, they were more spread out. I guess you had similar experiences in Norway that the, the waves distribute them further. And then also some people talked about um, the paraffin or someone said kerosene wax. Um, that was found later in 2020, where we had a similar situation again. So it was again like a acute pollution um, event that happened and municipalities that looked how much, how much paraffin do they find on the coast and um, how it should be cleaned up. And um, I mean, here in the, um, the timeline, you, we have heard most about it. Just to you, if you look on the, on the 30th of April, um, what I heard from Lent Duels, and they got collect, connect, um, contacted by the police. 
um, and they got notice of the pellets and then uh, we from the West Coast Trust had contact with uh, Lance Stevenson and the Swedish agency like for, I don't know the English name, half, uh, half of Vatten and the and the Oslo Film Friluftsråd um, since then. Um, and uh, we got both um, the map um, where pellets were reported and uh, information about how it could be best cleaned up from Norway. And uh, how it was handled in Sweden is that the pellets were um, collected during regular beach cleanings. And we estimate that the amount of pellets washed ashore in Sweden are 2.5 ton. And that's based on the observations that were reported on the pellets map. Um, this is a bit of um, a comparison between how it's been handled in Norway and in Sweden. As we heard all, there, is a very, there was a very well established routine and a very big response in Norway with extra cleanings. Um, with like Schusteracket and the Ostrofjons Friluftsgård, both for the pellets and the paraffin, they did extra cleanings, well organized uh, work and um, good support from the municipalities. And in Sweden, we cleaned up what we found during the regular beach cleanings that are done every year. Um, so it was not classified as an acute pollution here. And there were no rescue services that helped to clean up, but it was just assessed as marine litter. And um, here you see the map that's been shown before too, um, that Friedrichstadt shared with us, and where um, there were quite some reports from pallets on the here on the coast as well. And on this map, then on the both the pictures that we got from the map and um, the amounts of pallets estimated by the people who found pallets on different um, areas, we estimated the, uh, the amount that we think was washed ashore here. But it's uh, of course an estimation, so it's hard to know. Um, yeah, you're well aware of all of you, I guess, that it's, it's hard to, to assess like a whole coastline. Uh, so um, we did our best to try to get an idea about the amount. And, um, we, uh, from the Swedish West Coast Trust, we experienced that there is a good contact between different authorities. I mentioned the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management that we were in contact with, Lance Duelsen. Also, the, um, um, we have an agency that's uh, called MSB, that's for like, it's the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency and uh, keeps it entirely that all we all had some kind of contact also with Oslo Films Friluftsrådet and, and Kystverket and uh, from Denmark with Kimo that there is um, a communication between the Nordic countries and we were thankful for all the information we got from Norway and also for the map that helped us really to, um, to see where the problem was and how much and to try to get an idea about uh, the situation. But uh, we also wish for an improved handling inside Sweden. So um, there is um, a bit of a unclear responsibilities as far as we experienced it. Um, when I got the message about, well, we have a lot of pallets on the, on the coast. I didn't really know who to contact. And I contacted my contact persons and they, we tried to find like, okay, what do we do? But they, um, I experienced that it was a, quite a slow communication. Um, so therefore we would really wish for like an established contact list and a best practice routine for acute pollution events. And I also um, talked to Hassan Vattenindikaten and they said that, yeah, we, we are working on this and we will try to take uh, a lot of the lessons from today to try to um, yeah, work on a future solution so that we can also feel as well prepared as Norway at some point, that would be amazing. So uh, yeah, these are their experiences that, that we had. Um, if you have questions, you can contact me and also the, um, other persons who are um, with us today in the, um, but not speaking from the municipalities. Um, we, uh, yeah, that's how we handled it in Sweden. And um, thanks again for 
all the information that we got from Norway. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.